Well, um, you notice I'm wearing the, wearing the same thing I was the other day, and my hair is messed up. Well, that's usual, normal thing. Grease on my hands. I uh, fixed my car today, and I did a I, I did a good job. I fixed it. Um, but I thought I'd film it, so just to be different and boring. So here it is. Here is my tutorial on how to replace your alternator. And by the way, if you ever have an alternator go out, there is no reason, no reason in the world to spend $200 to have somebody else do it for you unless you just don't want to do it because it, it, doesn't, it took me an hour. Literally an hour. That's actually the quickest one I ever did. Buick LeSabre took me almost three hours because it was hard. Uh, today wasn't so bad. So here is my tutorial on fixing your Mustang. So I got to replace my alternator and I figured I'd uh, show you a couple of the things that it takes to get it done. First thing you want to do is remove the battery. You want to remove the positive first and the negative second. First thing that we need to do is re take a few things off. So the first thing I'm going to remove, and I've already actually done this, is the aftermarket cover, which I need to clean. This was the uh, this is actually on the 07s, but I went ahead and bought it for my 06. The second part is I have to remove my air intake hose, which has my uh, one of my sensors. Here's my air mass airflow sensor. There's another mass airflow sensor. All sorts of good stuff right there. Now, if you look down in here, you'll see our pulley system. This is my alternator running right here, and this is the tensioner. The tensioner keeps this belt nice and tight, and all your cars have this. Everybody's car has this serpentine belt or one belt. We used to have two or three belts that run our cars, but now we just have one. And this is tensioner down here. I don't know if you can see it. <clears throat> That's what keeps the tension on the belt. Now one of the things you have to do is you have to loosen that tensioner to be able to get the belt off the alternator. And you use a what's called a serpentine belt tool. This tool, as you can see, has all different ways of turning that serpentine that uh, the tensioner. And I'll show you how that goes. So the first thing that we do is we take part of the serpentine belt tool and we put it into the little hole that's on the tensioner. And again, the tensioner is what causes the belt to have tension to hold it into place. Put it into the little hole that's built specifically for the tool. And then we take the second piece and put it in the top tool. You can see now I have a nice little breaker arm. Now, what we do is we pull back, releasing the pressure, as you can see. When we release the pressure, we can now pull the belt off and that's it now we can move on to removing the alternator so on the Mustang it's different than most there's actually a bracket that holds on to the alternator and this bracket is held on right here there's one exactly like this on the other side we remove this bolt which I've already done and that should free up the top of the alternator as we see here now what I need to do is look, release these two and once those are released, the alternator should slide out. Now this bolt is really on there. So what I've done is I've linked two wrenches together, which gives me a nice hard uh, lever be able to get that off there, which will break the bolt quite honestly, quite easily, and it gives me a little bit more room to do it. So now that the bolts are off, the this is still attached to a uh, one of my wires, which we're going to leave in here. But you notice this is nice and floating now, which we shall be able to pick take out. <laughs> As we see, it comes out quite easily. <clears throat> and now, we remove the plug from the back that actually sends the electricity to 
the system. Right here. What size is that? I don't know. Obviously not that one. And a 10 millimeter. And now you see I've got the alternator out. This is the way it was in the car with the bracket holding it on. And this turns and creates friction, which creates electricity inside which runs your battery. As you can see, this is the same part. It even says Motorcraft on the back right there. Hmm. But it's remanufactured by Duralast. What they've done is is they've replaced the the little deals that rub creating the electricity inside because that's what goes out. So what we're doing now is we're putting the bracket back on, which I finally got out. That was actually the hardest thing is getting this bracket removed. Putting the bracket back on, this actually holds it to the engine. So it's very necessary that we do it correctly because if excess vibration will cause the uh, alternator to fail prematurely. And so we're putting five or six radios and a, uh, 12, two 12 inch speakers and a 500 watt amp on it. But I never did that. That wasn't me. And so now, what we're going to do, we've attached the ground back to the alternator, and we're going to take the, and we're going to take the uh, power and snap it back in place, maybe. Now I can slide the alternator back into the engine slot, or the alternator slot in the engine, and hopefully it fits. It's interesting. Why doesn't it go on? It's like it's too big. See? It's caught on the... So this one, assembly. if you're wondering earlier, I didn't tell you. This has to be loose to be able to get the alternator up in here. You can't have this attached on it, because if you do, it gets caught on the throttle body. What you saw me fool with earlier, I forgot to loosen it up. This has to be loose to be able to fit in. These bottom pieces are actually open, if you can see these or not, actually open and they don't hold on to them very much. They're just there to stabilize the alternator. These are actually, this bracket actually holds it onto the engine. It actually holds it onto a little assembly here. The So these just fit over the, as you can see, this little piece right there. And then once we get that in there, we'll attach this, the bracket to the alternator, and then the, bra then the bracket to the housing. Keep recording. <clears throat> okay. So as you can see, Kelly's got smaller fingers than I do, so she's going to put the final bolt in to the bracket that goes into the alternator. And once she gets that started, we'll use the wrench to finish it off. So the next thing we want to make sure we do is make sure these are lined up, but we want to make sure that this bottom piece is pushed back as far as it can go. Uh, because once we tighten these top ones down, we're going to be stuck with whatever position we leave it in. And so now the next thing we need to do is tighten up the bottom ones so they stay in place, but we only want to do it finger tight just in case they're not exactly lined up. Once they're lined, once we get the top ones on and they're all done, that's when we'll cinch down the bottom ones as tight as we can. Well, as, as tight as we should. It should be just a little bit more than a finger tight. Just, just barely wrench tight. Don't put them on there too hard because it might seize up and if you ever have to replace it again, you'll never get it off there. And now that we've got the bottom ones on, now what we want to do is we want to go through and Attach, attach the bracket to the housing. Okay, so now that we've got the bracket installed and we've got it finger tight, 
we're going to go back through and after we make sure this is done finger tight and then we're going to uh, make sure that everything's on there in the right position bottom's not loose and if the bottom's not loose then we tighten everything down a hundred percent okay so now that we've got the alternator nice and tight and all our bolts are tight connections are set we need to put the belt back on which means we do this again of course now we attach the long one to the short one bring it down which releases the tension and allows us to put the belt back on. We want to make sure everything's lined up, double check, and make sure that everything's on the pulleys and there's no awkward belts or else we'll lose it as soon as we turn the car on. In other words, the gears will eat the belt alive. And so now we want to take our intake manifold and our hose and reattach them so the way the engine can breathe and attach it to the filter housing here so that way we don't suck up a bunch of garbage into our engine and cause the engine not to work correctly. <clears throat> That's good. So now I'm going to put back on my non-factory stock cover. This is actually how the engine came, but I liked having the cover uh, as you can see, it didn't quite fit, but you know what, who cares? I'll put that back on. And the, almost the very last thing we want to do is rehook the battery, which means we need to put the negative on first and then the positive. Okay. So now the moment of truth, we're going to see if the car will start again. Go ahead and make sure it's in neutral. Make sure the brake's on. And go ahead and turn the key and then start it. And now that you've seen that, um, it, it only took me about an hour. The car runs fine. Then I took my, uh, you know, they always have a core charge for the alternator. So I took the alternator back to AutoZone and uh, got my uh, deposit back for the little breaker bar and uh, it, it did a good job I, I gosh if you have a car breakdown and you want somebody to fix it give me 25 bucks and let me film it I'll do it I'll do it I guess anyway. so that's it for today that's all happened. So, talk to you tomorrow.